going to be debugging a class library today. And I know there's a few ways to do this, but I'm going to show you an extremely easy way. We don't need to load any symbols. We don't need to attach the process. Okay. So first things first, you got to have an application that consumes a library. Of course, in my case, I'm going to use the data vids library and the data vids, data vids library just happens to be a NuGet package. Now I've built that NuGet, NuGet package in debug mode and published an RC. That means release candidate NuGet package. If you want to see how to do that, you can check out some of my other videos on NuGet packages. But anyways, so in this case, I've got a NuGet package out there and I'll show you how I included that managed NuGet packages. And I want to debug right into it and hit a breakpoint inside that package. That's my own code. So I've got this Siegel software package repository in DevOps. Yours might be in Bitbucket or it might be in GitHub or somewhere else. And I've got this, this package that I want to debug. So if you go to your program.cs, if you're using .NET 6, you might not have main. It might just be a, a regular set of statements here. In my case, I built a .NET 6 application and I added main and I added this create host builder, which you often see in web projects, so that I could have a console app that does dependency injection. I do have one dependency injection video out there. If you'd like me to make more, uh, just be more specific in your comments. Tell me what kind of dependency injection you're trying to do and I'll make a video on it. Anyways, so I'm doing dependency injection and I've got a service. This service consumes that library. That library is built in debug mode and is hosted and we're going to hit a breakpoint in it. So what you have to do is build this program. This is my program that consumes it. We're also going to build this one in debug mode, as you can see up here. We'll build it. And you're going to find the path to that executable for this program. Then we're going to open the code for the library. So let's get the path to this one by right clicking on one of the files. And we're going to do open containing folder. We'll then go into the bin folder into the debug folder and we'll get the executable right here. So it's going to be slash data vids .exe, and I'm going to put that path into the clipboard, the path to the executable for this program. We're not actually going to run it. We're just getting the path. Now open a second copy of visual studio and jump over to your class library that you're trying to debug. In my case, I've got this kind of silly image, code that's going to draw a circle on top of an image. Maybe it's useful, maybe it's not, but this is just an example. I'm going to set a breakpoint inside the method within that library or within that NuGet package, however you've got it set up that you want to debug. I opened a second copy of Visual Studio because I'm debugging a NuGet package that's built in a different solution project. If you want, you could look at the project that's in the same solution that you're in, but in that case, you would probably just be stepping through it and you wouldn't need, you wouldn't have probably even opened this video because you'd already know how to do it. So proceed with what makes sense for your project. But if you're debugging a NuGet package or an external library, it might be easier for you to use a separate copy of Visual Studio. If you found a better way, leave it in the comments below. Now that you've got a breakpoint inside the library on the line that you want to hit, you need to now tell the project where your test project or where your solution is, the executable that is going to be calling this project. So where is that other project? Right click on your library project and go to properties. You're going to go down to debug general. Then you're going to click on open debug launch profiles UI. Next, you're going to go to the very top where it says create a new profile. See these buttons along the top, these four buttons, go to create a new profile and you're going to choose executable. You'll see profile one show up on the left here. We'll rename it in a minute. Go to the executable. You can paste in that path. Of course, you could have just browsed to it. Now we're going to scroll down a little bit. And if you have any command line arguments in your application, I mean, we may not be a, a typical console application. You may have all sorts of settings that are specific to your project. This is going to be the place to put those things. So anything special you need to run as administrator or as a different user, environment variables, etc., etc. Now I'm going to click on profile again, 
and I'm going to go to the right until you see rename. Mine's on the far right. And let's call it whatever you want. In my case, I'll call it data vids um, underscore debug lib. Now you can hit the X. There's no save button there. Go to the very top. You'll see you have debug, any CPU, and then you'll have the name of your project. You should be able to see one more over a drop down. It's probably defaulted to like this, the name of your solution. Hit that drop down and change it to the profile you just created. Datavids underscore debug lib in my case. And now you can just hit the play button directly on it. I have one line of code that gets executed before it hits my breakpoint. So let's just enter a string here. This is my test string, not a real path. <laughs> and boom, we've hit our breakpoint. Pretty cool. If I hover over file path, you can see the input that I put into that other executable. This is my test string. And I can start hitting F10 to step through the code. That's it. That's the easiest way to debug these things. Um, we still have available um, symbol loading and debugging that way. But I feel that this is a little bit easier. If you guys want to see the symbol loading, uh, if this isn't working for you, if you want to see attached to process, you could take a look at my attached to process video, or I could build you a symbol loading video. Leave it in the comments below if that's something you're interested in or if this doesn't work for you.